Hello. Hey, Drew here. It's a rainy Saturday morning as I'm doing this video. And if you're watching this in early 2020, like me, like probably the rest of the world, you're enjoying the experience of social distancing or quarantine, which means we've got plenty of time to play guitar. Awesome. So if you want to, grab your favorite hot beverage, grab your favorite ax, and let's break down how all of your favorite players can play incredible solos, hitting all the sweet notes every time. Let's get stuck into it. Oh, one other thing real quick too. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I'd be forever grateful. Hit the bell icon if you'd like to get notified whenever new videos come out. And if you've got something out of this video or you simply have a question, leave a comment down below. I really appreciate it. Thanks again, Guy. Oh, a quick side note too. Don't feel guilty about going away during this time to practice guitar. I'm sure your significant others probably had enough of you and you're annoying the living daylights out of them. Oh. Or maybe that's just Jody. Hmm. Never mind that one. Why? Hey, if you're anything like me, you probably read somewhere or you were told that to become a lead guitarist, you had to learn all of your scales, learn all of your modes, uh, practice all your techniques like alternate picking and sweep picking and legato and two-handed tapping and bends and slides. Practice all of those scales using those techniques, run patterns through them, do all this stuff. And then once you can do that, you'll be a great lead guitarist. Well, normally one or two things that happen. Either you get to the pentatonic scale and you'd learn that first pentatonic position, the one that we all know and love. <laughs> And that's about as far as you get. I can do that in A and I can play over 12 bar blues. Everything else just seems like too much hard work. Or the other thing that had happened is you'd learn all your scales, you'd learn all your modes, you'd practice all the techniques, you'd, you'd, you'd do all the patterns, you'd learn all your intervals. But then when somebody asked you to play a guitar solo, it just sounded like you're practicing at home in your bedroom. That happened to me when I was early on in my playing and I got a reputation for being a tasteless, unmusical shredder. For me, it wasn't until I got into country music that I realized that the secret to playing all the sweet notes had been under my fingers all along. The secret is that we just have to play the notes in the chords. Those chord shapes that we've been playing for years contain all of the sweet notes that are gonna allow us to play classy solos, just like all of our favorite players. For today, we're gonna to concentrate on three chord shapes that I'm fairly confident you already know and play, and I'm gonna give you a lick for each chord shape to help get you started. The first chord that we're gonna look at is an E form bar chord or a root six bar chord like this. One that we've all played for donkey's years. Now the lick that we're gonna play is gonna be this. Okay, so to explain this lick, the first thing we're actually gonna do, remember, most of this lick is gonna be just playing the notes in that bar chord. We're gonna slide up to the top two notes of that bar chord shape. So our bar chord's at the fifth fret in the key of A. So with our index finger, we're gonna slide from the fourth fret up to the fifth fret and we're barring the B and E strings. So it's basically sliding up to that top two notes in that bar chord. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bar at the seventh fret across the G and the B strings. That's gonna give us a little bit of a suspended sort of a sound. Um, but we're gonna play that, followed by a bar up the fifth fret, and a hammer on to the third of the chord, which is this note here on the sixth fret of the G string. That's a C sharp note. So it should sound like this all up to this point. The next part of the lick is we're actually gonna start on the root note of the chord, but this time the root note is on the seventh fret on the D string. We're gonna walk down the pentatonic scale, so basically down two frets to the fifth fret on the D string. Then we go to the A string, we do a little chromatic walk, which if you know your blues scale, you'll be really familiar with that. So it just goes from the seventh fret to the sixth fret to the fifth fret. And then what we do is we play an open string, which is just the A string. And then we go to the third fret, to the fourth, on the A string. And what that's actually doing is we're going from a minor third to the third of that chord. So minor third to major third. In country music, that's a really popular resolution. 
and in the last note of the lick, we're playing the root note again, or the tonic, which is the A note on the D string on the seventh fret. So if I play that really slow, it's gonna sound like this. And that's gonna give us our first lick. Okay, the next chord that we're gonna tackle is gonna be an A form bar chord. Now we're gonna play this in the key of D, so it's gonna be at the fifth fret. And the lick that we're gonna play for this one sounds like this. Now, to break this little guy down, we're gonna start by sliding from the minor third up to the major third. So that's the sixth fret on the B string, up to the seventh fret on the B string. The next note we're gonna play is gonna be the fifth fret on the high E, and once again, that's in our chord. And then it's gonna be the seventh fret of the high E string, so. The next part that we're gonna play is gonna be a unison bend. So we're gonna hold down our first finger on the fifth fret of the high E string, and our middle finger is gonna be on the sixth fret of the B string, and we're gonna bend that note on the B string up to the major third again. So the first part of this lick will sound like this. Now the next part, we're gonna play from the seventh fret on the G string. We're gonna pull off to the fifth fret on the G string. We're gonna play the seventh fret on the D string. Back to the fifth fret on the G string. Then from the seventh fret on the D string. We're gonna slide up to the ninth fret. We're gonna finish with our first finger on the seventh fret of the G string, which strangely enough is the D note, the root. So all up it's gonna sound like this. Nice and slow. And that's gonna give us our lick over the A form bar chord. The last chord that we're gonna to cover today is a C form dominant seventh chord. And we're gonna play this guy initially at the seventh fret, so it's gonna be an E. And the lick that we're gonna play over this sounds like this. Okay, so to play this lick nice and slow, we're gonna go from the fifth fret, a nice little slide of fifth fret up to sixth fret. That's playing the minor third to the major third again. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern. We're grabbing with our first finger the fifth fret on the B string. Now that's the root note of the chord. Then I'm doing a little, this one little ghost note there. Like that. And then we bend the seventh fret on the B string up a tone. And once we get up to the top, we grab with our pinky the seventh fret on the high E string. See how I cut it off? Then we release the bend and we finish up with our first finger on the fifth fret of the B string, which once again is the one of the chord. So nice and slow. Once more. Now just as a little side note, I'm using hybrid picking when I'm playing this, so when I'm jumping from the, the D string to the B string, it's not a great big pick jump. You can play it with a pick if you want, um, but I actually grab the higher notes with my middle finger on my picking hand. And to be honest, I play the rest of the notes with my middle finger. Uh, you don't have to, you can play it with a pick. This has a slightly different sound. I find with the finger it gives you a bit more of a percussive sound. Now that we've learned a lick for each chord, we're gonna learn how to put it all together and start making music with it. Now to start off with, this will sound a little bit mechanical. It's very much gonna be like, I suppose, a dot to dot. We're gonna put part A with part B and follow on like that. The first part of this is developing skill. And in the words of Tommy Emanuel, you start out by practicing a skill, but then as you practice, it'll magically transform into music. So keep that in mind when you're practicing this stuff. The first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna take each lick, and because each lick is attached to a chord, we're gonna actually move that lick 
from one chord to the next in the chord progression. Now the chord progression that we're going to play over is going to be two bars of A, two bars of D, two bars of E, followed by two bars of A. Pretty common, we're using the one, four and five chords in the key of A, and we're going to move each lick through those shapes. So have a listen, I've got a backing track behind me for this next part, so have a listen to lick one played over that track and moving up the neck. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to take our second lick, which is over our A form bar chord, and we're going to do the same thing. So have a listen to that. The last one's going to be our C form lick, played over that same chord progression. Have a listen. Hopefully after listening to that, you've heard that the lick sounds good over the chords and even if you were to play those licks by themselves, you'd actually hear the chord changes. But obviously if all we can do is jump up and down the neck, it can get a bit monotonous and sometimes it can sound a little bit disjointed, unless that's the way you want to sound. So next, I'm going to play each lick in one position. Have a listen. <laughs> Now that I've shown you where to begin, it's up to you to put in the practice and also to experiment with these licks to see how many different ways you can combine them to come up with solos of your own. Now what I want you to remember is that music is a language and just like languages, the more vocabulary we have, the easier we can express what we want to say. So in our case, the more licks that we know, the more that we can say on the guitar. All the music theory that you can learn, all the music theory that, that teachers teach the only real reason that it's there is to explain why something sounds the way that it does and then to allow us to reproduce that whenever we want in whatever key we want. So just keep that in the back of your head. Now to help you practice this, the backing track that I use for my examples, there'll be a link to it at the end of the video so you can practice along yourself. So if you want to join me in my next video, I'm going to show you the other chord forms and I'm also going to show you how you can take licks that you already know figure out what chord form that they come from, which will then allow you to apply them to different chord changes so that soon you'll be playing ripping solos just like all your favorite guitar heroes. So until I see you next time, keep picking and have fun. Catch you later, guys.